Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Georgia Wrestling Now, a production brought to you by GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com, where we bring you the latest news and information on the local scene in Georgia and around the Southeast region, as well as interviews with the newsmakers. And now, the GWH Radio Network presents Georgia Wrestling Now. Happy Memorial Day, and thank you for listening to Georgia Wrestling Now. This is Jonathan Williams from WrestlingWithPopCulture.com, being joined by the human hand grenade Danny Only and Team All You Can Eat's Matt Hankins. Hello, guys. Yo. Hey, I got a question. (laughs) Did you ever ever stop to think how the hell happy and memorial go hand in hand? I wondered that earlier. I wished a happy holiday, and I was concerned. (laughs) Yeah, well, I guess I, it's somebody, the, somebody posed that question to me, and I was like, "Well, as a veteran, I guess you can be happy that uh, because of all the people that have fought, and uh, unfortunately those that have died, you are now free to say Happy Memorial Day, as opposed to however the hell you say that shit in German." <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess um, we get two of two of those from Danny tonight. Yes. Assuming that you'll have some trivia for us at the end of the show. Oh, I, I do have I do have a fun fact with Danny only that will will be at the end of the show. But hey, we got we got to work on the timing on that. So you you announce it and then you play the music, or do you play the music after I state the fact? Because it's we're getting bush league with that. We gotta get we gotta get our shit together here, guys. Which music? We'll the, announce uh, <laughs> we'll the damn... sounder. Then you hit us with the fact. I'll, I'll, I'll put right. that in motion right now. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Which music are you talking about, though? Damnation. The Damnation music. Oh, yeah. Well, that's all on your end. I'll take care of that. Who is it? I thought I thought Danny played that. So you've been you doing know, that, Matt? It's me, yeah. It's me. Oh, okay. I will just I'll say, play. I will just turn it over to Matt when it's time for that. He'll set it up, and then Danny can do his thing. All right. In the words of Hannibal, I love it when a plan comes together. I got a cigar right now, so this is working perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, uh, it was another big weekend in Georgia wrestling. I know we were all at Academy Theater on Friday to see another great Empire Wrestling show. With uh, seems like anytime Davy Richards and Kyle O'Reilly and whoever else they bring along shows up to Academy Theater, everybody steps it up a little bit, and. Um, that definitely was the case on Friday, I think. I'm guessing you guys might agree. I would agree. Yeah, I, would. I would Marco Polo's ass. Yeah, <laughs> I bad guess you did. Night for the Crown Jewels. It was a terrible evening for Crown Jewels. It was. That, that was, uh, who all? It was first, it was Pandora, and then uh-huh. it was... Then our own Danny Only. Yes. And then an odd, surprising appearance by the Jagged Edge, who took out apparently his best friend... Oh, Doug. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah the Jagged Edge, uh, for once, had people cheering for him. Not one to be shown up by Danny only, of course, he had to show up. Right, yeah. I guess that was probably my... all all the motivation he needed. Yeah, I wonder how my coattails smell. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, that was Friday night, and then uh, we got to see uh, Tommy Daniels finally got his long-awaited match against uh, Davey Richards, and I think he he may have regretted it after the fact. (laughs) That seems to happen to a lot of people who get their dream match with with Davey Richards. I I thought he held his own as much as he could, but, I mean, when you're in there against a machine, anything short of perfect is probably going to end in a loss. Yes. I think uh, I think I think Tommy just uh, he 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 gave it his best. Uh, I think Tommy psyched himself out and he overestimated exactly what he was getting himself into because uh, I'm far from a supreme athlete and, and I had my ass handed to me by Davey for for a good bit of that match and luckily I was able to pull out a win. But uh, I think I think it was a good wake up call for Tommy and hopefully he'll uh, he'll take it. 
and, and learn from it and, uh, you know, keep putting in the work he needs to do. And, you know, hopefully he'll get another shot to do it, you know. Yeah, well, we shall see. Um, but it was an enjoyable match nonetheless that uh, was followed by uh, the Contras, who who had been in, uh, interrupted earlier in the night, so they couldn't cut their promo, <laughs> and they came out and just picked up where they left off as if nothing had happened, really, which was entertaining as always with the Contras. And I guess they are still undefeated technically, as are uh, we are two, as they have been lately. But uh, we are three. Uh, I guess did they announce? Is that going to be a rematch for next Friday, or do we know yet? Oh, we hadn't known yet, but I'm sure it, it has to come to fruition at some point. We'll both of them still be standing there undefeated in the tag season, so I'm sure it right. is to come. Uh, if you hear the Contras tell it, I'm sure we are three are shaking in their boots, but I saw something else, but I won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> tell them, big <Yeah>. man. <laughs> tell them, big man. <laughs> Kettles were unsettled, to say the least. <laughs> yes. Well, I uh, I ventured out to Peach State Wrestling Alliance again on uh, Saturday and had the honor, if you see what I did there, to see uh, uh, Davey, Davey Richards and Kyle O'Reilly and, uh, what well, I forget the other guy's name, Darren, Dean? Darren something. Darren Dean, I think. Yeah, but, uh, oh, but at, Peach, at Peach State he went under a different name, and I don't remember that one either, but uh, anyway... Uh, Davey Richards and Kyle O'Reilly put on a great match uh, at that show that the crowd, that that particular crowd just didn't know how to take unless uh, Kyle O'Reilly was going out and getting them riled up. But anytime the wrestling was actually going on, they kind of zoned out. The crowd did. Um, but that was a, an interesting night. I was there to present uh, Shane Knowles, who I should mention is one of our guests tonight the commissioner of uh, Peach State Wrestling Alliance. I was there to present him with a plaque, and uh, he never showed up to accept it, but Wicked Nemesis did come out and tried to accept it. Um, but I uh, I tried to – I kept the plaque because I wanted to get in touch with Shane and see what was going on. I wasn't able to get in touch with him. And then at the end of the show, he showed up, uh, and he was – clothes were torn. He was bloodied up a little bit, and he uh, – Apparently, Wicked Nemesis was claiming all night that Shane had finally sold the promotion to him at 5.30 that afternoon. But what actually happened was they ran him off the road and beat him up, and he was able to uh, make it back and get his revenge at the end of the night. But overall, it was a great show, regardless of who was in charge. And uh, they've got their big anniversary show coming up this Saturday, so I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about with Shane a little bit later on the show. If and you then, got uh, out we unburned, also, you probably in, if you got out unburned, you're in a good shape. They burn people what? out there. If you got out without being burned, I call it a success. They will set a man on fire out there. Yeah, I saw that uh, two weeks ago. That's where uh, Mike Jackson was hitting the chest with a fireball, which is why he wasn't there this week. And uh, honestly, I don't think I don't think the Wicked Nemesis and the Merchants of Death or Tribulation or whatever they're being called now have any personal problem with me. I think I've just kind of been caught in the middle of all of it. So uh, I just try to stay out of all that and be an objective journalist. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Danny, you were at Anarchy on Saturday. Um, anything to report from that show? Yeah, man. Uh, it, was a, it was a good show all around. Uh, the main event was Slim J against Sean Tempers for the NWA Anarchy Heavyweight Championship and uh those two uh those two big goose in the elite, uh Seven and uh Gomez Adams, I'm sorry, uh Brian Casanova decided they were gonna get involved in it and uh me and Strick came out even the odds a little bit and uh beat him up a little bit and sent him back to the back and uh Slim ended up getting screwed over. Uh, you know, he the the, the elite came out and hit Slim with their finish and then uh we came out and chased them off. And, uh, unfortunately, the ref had been knocked down, so he didn't see all that. But what he did see was uh, Brody Ray Chase hitting Sean Tempers with uh, with Jerry Palmer's axe handle, which Jerry threw into Sean. And uh, <clears throat> Sean, being the uh, unsportsmanlike uh, douchebag that he is, went for a baseball swing and missed, because uh, I'll go ahead and chalk that up to his favorite team, being the Phillies. He, he, uh, 
he missed and uh, Brody got the bat, and, or excuse me, the axe handle, and uh, he nailed him with it. And uh, Brent Wiley saw it. So uh, what was what was supposed to be a jubilation and celebration by the NWA Anarchy Faithful when Slim J won the heavyweight title again uh, was quickly uh, turned over, and uh, Sean Tempers walked out with the title again. But uh, there, there's 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 definitely some uh, some things that are going to be evolving soon. Uh, we proved, you know, that the, the elite tried to take out Strict Nine a month ago, and they uh, they failed. And we we got a little bit of revenge back, so it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. But it, it it's definitely going to be uh, the four of us beat the hell out of each other. So we'll see how that evolves. It's the same right. the numbers games are stacking up all over the state. You got the the MOD out there in Carrollton. You've got the Empire running wild in, in Avondale and seems to be Cornelia's got their own set of problems. So something's got the key of around here pretty soon. Yeah. Well, I uh I guess I guess now's as good a time as any to go ahead and bring up the news. Uh the uh I hope that a resolution at uh, Anarchy comes soon because uh the numbers will be tipped in the uh in the NWA elite's favor, actually the NWA elite slash Jerry Palmer's favor and actually in the Empire's favor by uh one more person. Because uh, around July time frame, I will be departing the country for one year. So uh, the human hand grenade, Danny Only, will be out of Georgia wrestling for approximately one year's time. Are you going to wrestle overseas? Uh, not unless the Taliban has a wrestling company in Afghanistan. <laughs> I'm... Uh, I'm taking a job with my company to to go over to uh, Afghanistan and support communications missions for uh, all of our troops that are deployed in Afghanistan. And while I'm there, I figure I'd make a buttload of money. So uh, it's one of those things that, you know, I I had to look at everything outside of wrestling and and make that decision that that was best for me and and my family and my, uh, my personal life. Because if my personal life is in shambles, then I can't put everything that I want into wrestling. Uh, and one year is honestly nothing. I've already been in Georgia for almost four years now, and it's flown by. So one year in the grand scheme of things isn't anything. I'll go do one year overseas, come back in a very, very uh, comfortable position, and then I'll be able to put uh, 100% into everything that I have in, in the wrestling and ride that uh, ride that course as long as I can. So I guess you found the, the secluded, balmy vacation spots you were looking for, huh? No, no, I'm still debating, man. That's that's gonna be uh that's gonna be Christmas. Um part of uh part of going over overseas and working overseas is you get a uh, large sum of your money tax free, but you have to be outside of the continental United States for three hundred and thirty one days. Uh which is part of the reason that I'm not gonna do uh come back six months later and do a spot show or something like that. Uh, I will be out of the country for at the very minimum eleven months so I can get that tax free break, but uh yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for Christmas. You know, me and me and the wife and uh, the family are gonna meet up somewhere. You know, I'm thinking somewhere like Fiji or Tonga or somewhere cool like that. You know, and spend a week on uh, spend a week on the beach with crystal, crystal clear water and celebrate celebrate Christmas the way the good Lord intended. Uh, getting drunk on the beach. <laughs> well, that's a bombshell, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess Matt will be looking for another co-host yet again. Yeah, well, I hope somebody somebody comes along and keeps it at least a little bit entertaining while I'm gone. So. Yeah, well, the fire spot of, of co-host. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we've got a caller right now. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's uh, the number of our scheduled guest, but I'll see who it is. Thanks for calling Georgia Wrestling Now. You're on the line with Jonathan, Danny, and Matt. Who is this? Did I just hear what I thought I heard? Did I, did I just hear that? Edge. Did I just hear that? You think did, I, did I just hear that to run from facing the jagged edge is somebody's ring and somewhere in Georgia across the world, Danny only will leave the country? Did I just hear that? <laughs> Danny only is going to leave the country. The Calico Kid is going to leave the country instead of facing the jagged edge at some point, somewhere, somehow. Well, Danny, if I need to chase you over to the deserts of Afghanistan, I'll do that. 
because you run your mouth too much. Now, as far as you looking for a host, you're listening to your host right here. Danny only is gone. Not only am I going to run you out of the country, I'm going to take your job. So when you grow <laughs> up and your nuts drop and you want to decide to come back to the United States of these Americas, look me up. won't be hard to find out. Have your job, and I'll be wrestling in your ring. Have a great night, folks. Oh, see, now you want to you go ahead and depart. See, you, there you go. You're, you're hearing <laughs> what you want to hear. He said host, not hostess. All right, not hostess cupcakes, you fat bitch. All right, I got one month left in this country. One month. That's 30 days. And by wrestling terms, that's at least four shows. I will fight you in any ring, in any place, every day until the day I get on that plane. Look, this is something that I can say with the utmost confidence. When I was asked numerous times, wrestling had absolutely no determining factor in this decision at all. I ain't afraid of nobody. Bro, I've been in the ring with the biggest and the meanest, and I ain't beat them all, but I've been in the ring with them. I am not afraid of anybody, but wrestling, I'm sorry. I love all you guys, but wrestling was not even a determining factor in this decision. I got to go. I got to do what I got to do, but you know what? Go ahead, go ahead and say it. Yeah, I'm scared. That's fine. I'm scared of you. I'm scared, dog. I don't know what you can do. I know, I know all those big dudes from Chicago. You all are really frightening, and I'm, I'm quaking in my chocolates right now, dude. I don't know what to do. So, yes, I am afraid of you. Um, but just keep in mind that in, if you decide to stay in wrestling as opposed to following your previous career choice, turning tricks down on Euclid, uh, you go ahead and live that, live that one year as high as you can. I'm going to come back. I'll be back. A year in wrestling is nothing. Cena's been in wrestling for 12 years now. How many of y'all remember that? Exactly. Wrestling ain't nothing. I'm going to come back and I'm going to beat your ass if I don't beat your ass before I leave. And if you do take over the show, I apologize to everybody listening now. All the dribble you got to hear. The Cubs suck, the Bears suck, the White Sox suck, Chicago sucks, and you suck. <laughs> you think they grow chumps that tall in the desert? Can you grow a chump that size with no shade? <laughs> Can I what? Can you grow a chump that size with a jagged edge in the desert? I don't, do you need shade and water and all that to make a chump that big, or is that just natural all over the world? Man, i got to get some miracle girl to grow a chump that big. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is something else. This is something that he's not taking into account. I'm not a little dude right now, okay? I'm not the biggest dude, but I'm not a little dude. i got one year of nothing to do but sit and watch a piece of equipment and wait for it to break. So that's 24 hours in a day of nothing to do but stew and think and eat and lift. And I've been on the Danny Only Get Bigger Get Out diet for the past week and a half now. I put on a good nine pounds. I'm getting big. I'm going to get bigger. And there's a lot of milk that I'm going to be drinking. So go ahead. Just think think that I'm nothing. That's fine. I, 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 I take that. I, I, I count for that. People think that I'm nothing. Just keep thinking that I'm nothing. Keep thinking you can hammer me down. That's good. Good, good. Keep that. Keep that. Keep that motivation. I want to see it when I come back. So when I butt your ass, you can be surprised, wondering what the hell happened to you. Well, I don't think anyone, at least anyone right now on the line, doubts what you can do in the ring. But as far as the, as far as Jagged Edge taking your spot here, uh, that that remains to be seen. I don't know how we're going to handle that. I guess we might do some auditions or something over the next I few weeks. Too. Give it to him. I want to see him fall on his face before I knock him on his face. Let's see it. Let him, let him, let him flow. Let him go. I'm down for it. Let him do it. I'll listen. All right. Well, we, like I said, we'll see. Uh, this is new news to all of us, so uh, it's not something I've had a chance to give much thought to. But uh, you know, uh, don't worry I mean, about it, guys. It's only it's only 52 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking of you know we have to deal with him for 52 episodes too so far we've only dealt with him in short spurts on here and he does fine with that but uh (laughs) short spurts that's kind of funny because that's what all the women in his life deal with him at (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna keep talking (laughs) well on to uh on to other things we've got uh oh i want to mention i went to the XWF show, which was the first uh, first show they've done in a few months. Um, and for those who haven't heard of it, that's the Exciting Wrestling Federation, which is held at WWA4. 
Um, and they crowned their first champion yesterday, which was Jimmy the Kid, uh, in a odd tournament type of thing. Um, but he came out on top and is their first champion. And I was one of three people presented with a very prestigious award of being inducted into the XWF Wall of Appreciation alongside WWA Force Frank Aldridge and Uha Nation. Um, so Ooh, I, have uh, a, I have a piece of paper with my name misspelled and uh, various other grammatical errors, but I appreciate it nonetheless because uh, being... Being alongside Uha Nation is uh, is an honor in any sense, I guess I should say. Um, even though I'm not near the uh, wrestler he is, I'm sure. <laughs> but I guess that's <laughs> not what I was being recognized for, obviously. But uh, yeah, so XWF return, and there are talks that they may move to a new venue for their next show, which is uh, they don't know the date or anything yet. But uh, they they are back, and they did a probably their best show yet of the three that they've done. And uh, and that was without Frankie Valentine or Uha Nation on the card. But they did have A.R. Fox, who was also at Peach State, and they had uh, various other very talented local wrestlers in a very hot, small place with very few spectators. Uh, Andy Wrestling. Well, it, it at least sounds like they do have some momentum going forward. You know, the last... The last couple of shows, people have struggled to find good things to say about them. Looks like you had had a little better experience than you used to having at least. Yeah, yeah. But they, they, they kept it show. They kept the show a shorter than usual. They only had one intermission, and they didn't have a lot of the uh, Holy the shit. people. What happened? I'm sorry. I, I'm on my back porch, and I just got dive bombed by a bird. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. No, I just flew right over my head. I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead, carry on. I'm sorry. I hope that wasn't a, a jagged edge carrier pigeon. <laughs> no, it was, it was a it was a magpie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, Matt, I know you were in Alabama. Did you catch any wrestling while you were out there? I wrestled uh, PBR and Takati all night, and I would like to say I was victorious. <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> I was the big winner. So, yeah, <laughs> I did not. Um, there is a federation out there that I've been meaning to get to, but every time I'm there, they're on their off week. So I don't plan things well. So, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. <laughs> I figure any time you plan a trip to Alabama, there needs to be a reason to go. Danny, <laughs> that is home, Daniel. <laughs> that is home. <laughs> I plan to go hug my mama and, and eat good. So, you know me. <laughs> That's about all I ever need. <laughs> <laughs> so who is this Jimmy the Kid that they crowned champion? I I don't know this person. Do I? He used to be part um, of a tag team called the Gym Class Heroes. Yeah, oh, I, I do know him then. Okay. Yeah, okay. I guess he yeah. he still yeah. is part of the tag team. It actually came down to him and his tag team partner, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, but um, Eric Eric Maine. Yes. So yeah, actually the. The first match of the night was the two of them. They were going to do a tournament, I think, to crown the champion. And uh, there was interference, and and things got out of control because everybody on the roster wanted to be involved and, uh, in, in the tournament to become the champion. So Miguel Rivera, who, who runs XWF, came out and announced that they were going to do a, let's see, it was a battle royal. No, first it was, I forget, there were, it was like three stages of hell or something he called it, and it was basically three different stipulation matches, including a battle royal, and then when it got down to two people, that's who was remaining, was Jimmy the Kid and Eric Main. Jimmy the Kid was victorious, and then it looked like uh, it didn't cause much friction between them as a tag team, because they were, you know, congratulating each other on a good match afterwards, and so we'll see what happens from there. But yeah, I'm sure you've seen him somewhere, Matt, because they they yeah, they wrestled yeah. the, the U U I W I think one or the other one. Which one's the he's Jesus the Jesus looking, looking one. one? Okay, yeah, yeah. He was. They were um, maybe last year. They they did a couple of PCW shows. So yeah, yeah. I, I just I never knew his name. I guess I don't pay attention to things a lot. I just scream at people. Yeah. 
If you said Jesus one, I'd knew right off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh and there's a lot of a lot of shows this weekend too. Um a lot of big shows, including Atlanta Midget Wrestling at the North Atlanta Trade Center on Saturday. Anybody going to that? I don't know. Cool. I, I, if if uh, if UCW is taught us anything, the birds are going to cancel that show. So <laughs> no, the midgets have uh, they run there. I think about two or three times a year, and they I've never been to one of the shows, but I think they draw pretty well, and they've never canceled. So I don't think it's a venue curse. I think it's a uh, problem elsewhere with UCW. Uh, oh, for a second when you said uh, I thought you were going to say they had their shit together. So. Who, the midgets? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I guess they do. I mean, like I said, they run there fairly regularly. But I hadn't given no. much thought to that one. Um, I think, there's, like you said, there's so much going on, I hadn't really pinpointed where I'm going to be. Yeah, well, PCW will be in Porterdale, which is always Porterdale. a good show. Uh, there's NWA Action, Peach State. Uh, is doing their anniversary show, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes when Shane Knowles calls in. So they're running, they're on this week, is that right? Yeah, yeah, they're doing, uh, I guess because it's their anniversary show, they're breaking their regular two-week cycle and running one week after their last show. And I'm not sure from there if they're going to do another show the following week or if they're going to wait two weeks or or wait three weeks or whatever, how they're going to do that. But they got a lot of big matches, uh, Including some midgets for that one too, actually. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they got a little Papa Pump, I think, is one guy's name. But, I hope uh, he has half the temper Steiner does. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be awesome to just see a midget flip out and start throwing shit. Are you sure that's not Petey Williams? <laughs> no, nah, that's, that's a Maple Leaf muscle man. This is a legit midget, the little Papa Pump. I've seen a promo yeah. picture of him. And he, I mean, he's a midget, but I mean, I just want to see him flip out and start throwing stuff. That would be awesome. <laughs> I wonder if he hates Ric Flair too, or maybe he just hates uh, everybody. <laughs> maybe he hates David Flair because of stepped out in stature. Maybe he hates everyone that's taller than him. He's got a lot of hate in his heart. So if you got hate in your heart, you let it out. So. Well, we can ask Shane when he calls in. Um, because uh, he, I guess, I'm assuming he knows the guy since he's booked on his show. But we shall see. And uh, also, your friend Jagged Edge is going to be wrestling at TNT Pro Wrestling, Danny, that same night. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you got to be a big fish in a small pond, so go ahead. <laughs> and then on... Uh, Sunday is the Rock and Roll Monster Bash at the Starlight Six Drive-In, and Monstrosity Championship Wrestling will be making its return, as well as its debut at the Monster Bash. Uh, the Monster Bash is an annual event that's been going on for several years now, and it's usually just bands during the day, uh, movies at night, and various other festivities throughout the event, but they're they're making uh, Monster Wrestling the main event this year. Throughout the day, I believe it's going to be in between bands. I'm not sure if that's right, though, but... Um, I hope nobody have... gets shot. Oh, <clears throat> I'm so glad somebody brought that up. Yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Well, that place is a cool place, and, you know, that was a a weird thing that happened a few weeks ago, and I don't want to discourage people from going there, because it's... Now, nah, let, me, let me go ahead and preface that. I mean, it's... Anytime you do anything in the middle of a major city, and Atlanta is definitely a major city, you run the risk of anything happening. I mean, you can go to the grocery store and be caught in the middle of a robbery. It's just that's par for the course. That's what happens at a big town. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, the worst thing to happen at Starlight since uh, that shooting was uh, me walking up in my underwear after getting carjacked. So they must be doing okay. <laughs> so. so they had a lot of time. Um, there should be a lot of time before anything bad happens again out there. There was a pretty big span. Yeah, they, between they got a good eight, eight, nine, ten years till something bad happens again. So you guys should go check it out. Yeah. And that actually was pretty tragic. The guy that got shot was um, a local. He was like a kung fu 
master and he performed mm-hmm. with sideshows and at the Renaissance Festival and things like that. So I didn't know him actually, but I know a lot of people who do did know him. And yeah, um, it's pretty tragic, man. Yeah, score one for whoever caught the chump that did it. I saw his picture on the news a bunch. I was glad he got they got him pretty soon. Yeah, but uh, we've got a caller, uh, and it does not look like Shane Knoll's number. So let's see who we have. Thanks for calling Georgia Wrestling Now. Who is this? Man, you guys are killing me. You guys are killing me. The the, the radio show you guys. This is the Wicked Nemesis. Lord have mercy. Danny, first of all, thank you, because Memorial Day is all about guys like you, guys that went out and put their asses on the line for this country. So, Danny only, I don't give a shit about wrestling, sir. You are doing what's right for your family, and and next but, but big up to you, sir, to go out there and make that money. So congratulations to you, sir, and, and happy Memorial Day to, to you, because you are military, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How you doing, brother? I'm doing fantastic, but you guys are killing me. I'm sorry, y'all are just, y'all are just, just. Uh, let's talk about, let's talk about Jonathan Williams. First of all, thank you for the shirt. I would gladly <laughs> wear that shirt uh, this week. That Friday night, I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and see you about my talk. my saved Paris shirt. I'm wearing that to NWA Pro South. Always a big fan up there, Danny. Only those people love you. And then Saturday night. <laughs> Saturday night, I'll be wearing my Wrestling with Pop Culture shirt as I get ready to walk into that 16-foot-high steel cage for War Games. And this is not my first War Game, folks. This is my fifth War Games. This is the fifth War Games I've been a part of. Danny only was a part of one of them. Yep. What is that noise? Somebody's is working. that someone's dog? or? Yeah, man, I'm playing fetch with my dog. You know what I mean? Mute the phone. I can do that. Oh, no, that's dog. okay. Just... It's working out. Wondering what it was. Man, he's fat, dude. I gotta keep him running so he doesn't have a heart attack or some shit. There, I'm here. All right. Well, wicked nemesis. Uh, as what happened on Saturday, uh, we were expecting Shane Knowles to call tonight, and and we got you instead, kind of like the beginning of the show last Saturday. But we are now. No, being Shane will by... call in. I just wanted to save the show. I don't know who in the who in the hell that guy was that called in, kind of put him over the new host. Eat it, okay? I'm here. I'm here. Let's calm down. Let's take a breath, and let's start from one. John, I gave an opportunity to 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 give me and to sell me. I was gonna pay him for it. And as you said, Bull Cannon. The only reason why I didn't set Bull Cannon on fire Saturday night is because I respect the man. Same thing with Johnny Swinger. Action Mike Jackson. He's held people down his entire career. So what I did to Mike Jackson, I did for every young wrestler that's ever been in this industry that Mike Jackson's ever tried to pay with with nut sweat money or tried to hell down because he <laughs> thought that they weren't something. So wait, it wait. felt good watching him burn in the middle of the ring. Didn't it, Matt, didn't it feel good watching him burn? Well, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I didn't like it. I'm, I'm not going to even pretend that it. <laughs> it was. It seemed like a long time coming more than anything. I mean, he did walk a man around the, the the guardrail twice, so, you know, I know that Chris Knox was shook up after that. So, I mean, you had full reason to, to get retribution. Well, Shane Knowles well, you know, has joined us, so uh, maybe Shane can give you his opinion on what happened to Mike Jackson. You there, Shane? Hello? Hello? Hey, Shane Knowles, is that you? Hey, Jonathan, how are you? All right. We've got, uh, just like uh, Saturday night, um, we're expecting you to call, and we got Wicked Nemesis instead, but now we've got both of you on the line, so I'm sure you've heard what he's been saying so far. Ready? Actually, I, actually, I have not. Uh, it's news to me. I just uh, called in on the segment I was supposed to, so Nemesis is on the air right now. Yeah, he... he be you too. Uh, he called in a couple minutes before you, and I brought him on the line. But so you're both here now. And he was just talking about how much he enjoyed burning uh, Mike Jackson a couple or a, a month ago. Yeah, I don't so, doubt that. Uh, he he has a big obsession with fire. Shh. It's okay. It's okay, Shane. I know you're still traumatized from what happened this past weekend. You can take a deep breath 
and I'm sure you can hit the blunt that Matt's smoking, and you can use your chakra, as I did in the middle of the ring Saturday night. Just, just take a second. Just now, how does it feel knowing that you're about to walk into something that you cannot run from, Shane? You can't run from the 16-foot steel cage. This is your first war game. This is my fifth war game, kid. Fifth. I think I may, my next one, I think I actually get on, on the punch card, I think I get a Slurpee on my next one. I'm not sure. Maybe Mike Jackson can pull some money out of his ass and pay me with it. I think that would be fantastic for this business. But, Shane, I had to come on because I knew, as always, you're late. You're always late. You're you're like you're like some stupid character from Alice in Wonderland, not not the Lewis Carroll that's based on an acid trip, but your uh, you know the, the Disney watered down version. You know what it's like. Your vanilla is everything. You know, you're you're vanilla gorilla. You know, and then they go get the Ultimate Dragon. How low can you go, guys? He went and got his worst enemy, the guy that tried to put him out of wrestling as a whole. I was just trying to buy the business from him. He goes and stoops down and gets his worst enemy. How does that feel knowing that you had to turn against your worst enemy? It's like the Hatfields and McCoys. They don't go, no, they, they don't go against each other. They, they're, they're against each other. They don't, they, you got somebody to watch your back, Shane, that you can't even trust. How do you feel about that? I'll tell you all you need to know. The Ultimate Dragon has been gone from Peach State Wrestling Alliance for nine months now. But the mere fact that I would even consider bringing him in for war games just tells you how serious the situation is, just how much I truly hate every fiber of your being. Well, Shane, for those who weren't there on Saturday, um, let us know, let our listeners know who all is on your team and what the whole situation is, the five-on-five five, uh, in a steel cage. Uh, it's you, the Ultimate Dragon, and who else is on your team? Uh, it'll be myself, the Ultimate Dragon, Mike Jackson, and uh, both Simon Sermon and Tommy Too Much of the Exotic Ones. This is my first War Games match. However, uh, it is my second time inside a 16-foot high steel cage, so uh, I do know my way around that a little bit. I believe you said, Nemesis, this is your fifth War Games have you not learned anything yet in your experience in this business so far? How many times did you come out on the uh, the winning end of those War Games matches? Hey, one out of four ain't bad. One out of four. All right, well, um... Hey, hey, uh, hey and don't meatloaf, and don't write a song on that, because I know how you like to steal stuff. I don't want to see Shane Knowles sing Meatloaf and one out of four ain't bad. I ain't having that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm mm. Wicked Nemesis, let me ask this. And I've I've seen this feud sort of evolve from basically the beginning. But what I never did get from you was why Peach State? You're involved in promotions all over the southeast, all over the world. What what about Peach State gave you that interest that you had to have it? That heritage championship me that is the it comes from a direct lineage of NWA champions that heritage champion Shane Knowles is one of the few people and I respect Shane and I'm doing this out of respect to Shane have you guys not seen how ugly Shane's gotten I mean I know Simon Sermon you know you know kind of on you Shane but you know even he wouldn't touch you now you've lost all this weight you look sickly I, I, I know, I mean, I think Saturday night, I think you may you may have even, you know, burst into a, into a stigmata as much as you were bleeding. But it's it just, it's that title. It's all about that. And if I had my way, I'd bring Danny Only in and, and have Danny Only as my right-hand man. And it may happen after this Saturday because it's not just about the title this Saturday. It's about the PWA Heritage Championship. It's about the PWA Tag Team Championship, and it's about the company as a whole. This is a loser leaves town. That means Shane Knowles can go and recollect his thoughts. Shane Knowles is a very successful businessman. I mean, look what he did to Peach State. Peach State is still on uh, what people would consider an off week. He's doing 275, 300 people. I mean, the man had almost 500 people for Battle Bowl. And I know there's going to be at least that many to watch me 
take Shane Knowles blood and run it all across those fans. All across those fans. That's what it's about. Shane Knowles built it, but he needs somebody to push him just ever so slightly through that quote unquote glass seaway. Shane, I respect you and I'm doing this out of respect. I'm doing this out of respect, man. You need time away. You need to take the six months and re energize. Go back go back to, to, to your to your trailer park on the hill. Go back and, and, and please make sure that this time you use Owen's Corning uh fabric. That way it doesn't, you know, burst into flames. Because that was I mean, the Pink Panther knows what's going on. So just make sure that you take that time away and you do what you need to do to re energize. And and you will have a spot in Peach State as a referee come January first, two thousand thirteen, unless we all die on December twenty first, two thousand twelve. I'm just Shane, um, you have one of the most volatile and voracious fan followings of anybody in the state. And I was wondering what their attitude was toward the Ultimate Dragon showing up because, you know, he was hated there for so long. How do you think they reacted to you sort of having to make a deal with the devil, so to speak, to maybe get yourself over the top? That's a good way to put that, basically making a deal with the devil, you know, stooping to do something that under normal circumstances uh, you wouldn't even consider. But I will say this, when I left the ring Saturday night, just to put this in perspective, the Ultimate Dragon, the most hated man that's ever walked through the doors at Peach State. Uh, but as I left the ring, I actually heard some fans saying, you know, I don't like the Dragon. I don't care for him at all. But if he gets rid of Nemesis and the rest of the MOD, he'll be all right in my book. And that really shows you just how much they hate this guy. And believe me, they're not alone. I'm not one much for hate. But you know, Nemesis, what you've done transcends uh, the wrestling business. What you've done uh, is a little bit different little out of the ordinary and i will say this if you want to run my blood all across the cage i'll tell you to do this make sure before you come to the arena that you do something you don't normally know how to do properly and that's why you're in because when i stick my size 13 boot right between your cheeks i want to make sure it's as clean as it was when it went in there shane i have a i have a question for you i was there to uh present you with a plaque on saturday and uh you weren't you were nowhere to be found at the beginning of the show and uh, I wasn't able to give it to you. Did you ever get the plaque? It was given to me, yes. Uh at oh. the event uh, security did get the plaque to me. I appreciate that. Sorry I wasn't able to uh meet you face to face. That was supposed to be a very big honor uh for myself on behalf of the promotion, but uh well we already know how that story ended. Right. Well hey, I'm gonna rewrite got... the book uh this Saturday, so We've got Final a caller on the line. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, we know how that story ended, but I will say this following Saturday, June 2nd, the final chapter, uh, it'll finish how it needs to be written. All and right, that's we'll Nemesis see. and his guy is gone. We'll see you this Saturday, but we do have a caller on the line. Um, mm-hmm. See if this is someone that may have a question for Shane or the Wicked Nemesis or both. Thanks for calling George Wrestling now. Who is this? Uh, Jonathan, this is Action Mike Jackson. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing Not well. I'm just listening to your program. We were just talking about you a little while ago. Well, that's, my ears must have been burning. That's why I picked up the phone to call. Oh, you. Uh, we've got the Wicked Nemesis and your friend Shane Knowles on the line. Did you uh, have something to add to what they've been talking about? I most definitely do. Last week I wasn't there. I heard all about what happened. Shane knows and I, we talked regular. Uh, he uh, he called me and told me exactly what had happened. I wish I would have been there to have been able to help out, but I was not there. And the reason I was not there is because you were there the week before. You saw exactly what happened to me. Uh, I was wrestling Chris Knox. He was undefeated. Matter of fact, I don't think he had been past three or four minutes with any opponent that he'd had. He destroyed everybody. He's kind of like the enforcer. And uh, I had him about eight or nine minutes, and I thought I had him beat. I hit him with about three neck breakers, and all of a sudden the ring filled up with guys, and guess who brought him? Old Nemesis, you know. He uh, he got me pretty good. A little sl- slight separation of the shoulder. And, you know, Crew Jones did a move on me, and then CJ did a move on me, and uh, JR, uh, J-Rod did a move on me, and Chris Knox did a move on me. And then of all the... Uh, of all the sorriness and all the lowdownness of the world, <clears throat> Nemesis gets in the ring and tries to be a wrestler and puts some kind of hold on me. I have no idea what that was. I'm not sure he knew. But I knew I got a slight separation of the shoulder, and then when it was all said and done, 
he threw the fire on me. I guess you saw that. You were there to see that. I, I'm assuming you witnessed the whole thing. I was there, as was uh, Matt, so we both saw that. Saw it all. Well, you know, all my life, you know, and, and I'm not here to scream and holler and act a fool. I'll take care of my business Saturday when I get there on June the 2nd, you know, the biggest show of the year, the anniversary show. You know, I'll take care of my business. But, you know, all my life I've wrestled with WCW, WWF, WWE, Georgia Championship, NWA, you name it, I've been there. And there's always people who can't do it for themselves and have to pay other people to do it. And that's Nemesis. I mean, Nemesis is, is a very smart man. I can't take that away from him. He put together, I think, what he called, didn't he call it the MOD or was it Merchants of Death? Is that what that stands for? Yeah. Okay, well, he put together an unbelievable group of guys. Crew Jones is probably one of the best wrestlers I've ever been in the ring with. What can you say about J-Rod? He he corrupted poor old C.J. Awesome. Chris Knox might be one of the strongest guys I've ever been in the ring with. So he put that together and made the MOD with it. But, you know, it's a simple thing. He couldn't do this thing himself, so he got somebody else to do it for it. But when he comes inside that 16-foot steel cage and it's lined up and there's guys everywhere, and, you know, I've had people call me and say, has Shane lost his mind? What is Shane thinking, putting all the belts on the line? Lose or leave town? You know, this, I, Jonathan, I'm sure you all have already talked about this. I didn't hear, hear the first of the program. But, you know, what kind of match is this? I mean, how unbelievable is a match where you have ten guys go in that ring inside that cage and five of them will not wrestle for Peach State Wrestling again? I mean, that's that's unheard of. I wrestled for 42 years, been in every kind of match, street fights, uh, cage matches, lumberjack matches, you name it, I've been in it. But I have never, ever been in a match where so much is on the line. I, mean, I personally don't want to leave Peach State. Been there four years. From the day one, I was there when they opened the doors in Bremen, Georgia, and Peach State started their history. And I, plan on, I don't plan on going anywhere, but, you know, this is the most dangerous match, and there's more there's more on the line in this match than any match I believe I've ever been in in my life. And you know, I, I know I know our I know our uh, uh, partners, the Exotics. You know, what can you say about those guys? Uh, they're pretty dirty. They know how to play the game. Shane knows. Shane's learned a lot over the years. But you know, you know who our fifth partner is. I'm sure y'all have already talked about that, haven't you? We have. Yeah. yeah. The Ultimate Dragon. I mean, you know, I've wrestled this guy a hundred times over the years. And I'm going to tell you what, you know, again, somebody said, Shay, is Shane crazy getting Shane, getting him in there? But, you know, Shane was smart enough and Peach State was smart enough to to know that they're not going to pay him until the job gets done. And I know he's, I guess we could call, what could we call him, a, a bounty hunter, a mercenary, you know, whatever you want to call him. And I know that he'll be in there and, you know, and sometimes you got to look at it like this. When you have to play dirty, you know, why not call the person who invented dirty, you know? So I plan on sitting in that dressing room and sitting right beside him, and I want him to tell me every dirty trick he knows because, you know, it's a no time limit, no disqualification, and I'm sure you've talked about this. The only way a man can win the match or, or lose the match is by submission. So, you know, <laughs> that's not the kind of matches I normally have. It's not the kind of matches most guys normally have. But I'll be learning some submission holds. You can bet on that between now and then. I got a little bit of a bad separation of the shoulder. got a little bit of a burn. But I'll be ready June the second. This coming Saturday, I'll be all guns blazing. All right. Well, um, guys, I know you're all involved in that main event, but there are several other matches on the card, and um, we're running out of time here. So quickly, I want to ask a couple questions. First, uh, I know Calm Like a Bomb Pandora is going to be there. Yeah. I believe I believe she's making her Peach State debut. Um, Wicked Nemesis, is are you bringing her in, or is she coming in on her own, or? Is that oh, something yes. you want to comment on? Oh, yes, sir. I am the calm like a bomb, Pandora, the greatest women's wrestler of our generation, the black rainbow of professional wrestling from the cradle to the grave, dripping with alchemy, calm like a bomb, Pandora, against one of the youngest and best performers and wrestlers out there. You say what you want to about Pandora. You can almost say the exact same thing except without the experience that Pandora has of Aisha Sunshine. Because I'm telling you right now, Aisha is no, is no slouch at all. The midgets can come. It, 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 this is a card. As I said, there is no other place you want to be June 2nd. I think that Danny only should, should, should be able to sit in his throne on, on a top and watch this because this is something that everybody should be at. This is the crowning. It is going to be the end of Mike Jackson. 
because now he's come on and told me he has a separated shoulder. I appreciate that. I didn't know that, so I appreciate you coming on and telling me that because I'm going to go right after it because I'm going to be the one to make you submit. That's right. When it's all said and done, I will make sure the MOD clears everybody out, and I will make Mike Jackson submit in the middle of the ring. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the finish right now. That's why I call it. And everybody on this card is here for a reason, guys. As you said, Shane Knowles, he put together one of the best cards he could. And I hope that he enjoyed it. Because Shane, it's one of the best. One of the best cards I've seen. But that main event is going to be your downfall, sir. Shane, yeah, uh, I when I put together this card uh, for the anniversary show, it was supposed to be a diverse lineup, uh, something you would not see top to bottom on a wrestling card. You know, you're going to see the Georgia Junior Heavyweight title defended by Stitch Cipher, uh, very popular among our fan base against Antonio Garza, the very first cruiserweight champion in PWA history. You'll also see a battle of the Giants as Bill the Butcher and the Giant Hillbilly Mike Reed, both men clocking in at over uh, 330 pounds, so definitely they'll have to reinforce the ring for that. Uh, as you alluded to, the women's match with uh, Pandora and Aisha Sunshine, who've been battling in Platinum uh, as well as other promotions, bringing their feud to Peach State for one night. Uh, and then the midget match. Uh, midgets are always an attraction. You know, it's a rarity in professional wrestling to see. You don't see these every time from a promotion, but you'll see little Fabio against little Papa Pump. And also added uh, um, this past week was, uh, of course, Stupid with Tweety will be taking on one of the best young up-and-coming professional wrestlers out of the Carolinas, Mr. John Schuyler, will also be on the event. Uh, when I put this card together, you know, I wasn't thinking that also, you know, we would have a bonus match, which would be uh, the first War Games event in our company history. And uh, quite frankly, I will say, win or lose, I think it'll probably be the only War Games match in Peach State Wrestling history. Whether I'm running the company or whether Nemesis is in charge, uh, you know, this is the kind of match where guys are never the same. When you when we wake up that next day, Sunday, June the third, uh, win or lose, you know, our lives will change. Uh, some for the better, some for worse. But, uh, you know, and that's the thing, the MOD, they've all been together. Crew Jones, Chris Knox, J-Rod, C.J. Awesome, the Wicked Nemesis, we've all seen what they can do. We all see how they work together as a cohesive unit. Uh, I think Mike Jackson, the Exotic Ones, and myself, we should be the underdogs in this. I think, because, you know, the thing is, though, we know these guys. We have footage because all of our shows are put on DVD by Southland Sports TV, so we've had nothing to do this week but to scout you guys, whereas... You've never seen the five of us in a ring together. You don't know what the Ultimate Dragon might do when he's seen with the exotic ones, what they're capable of. Uh, and I think that's certainly to our advantage. I believe he's going to he's gonna pee in his trunks or tights or whatever he's wearing, and then I'm going to take his mask off. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to take his mask home with me. I'm going to reveal, breaking news, I'm going to reveal who the Ultimate Dragon is in the war games because I'm going right for his mask. And we'll see how long he stays in that in that war game knowing that he has his secret identity revealed. So I'm going to reveal that it's no, none other than Megan, the Martian Manhunter, his ultimate dragon. There, I've said it. And then you bring in midgets. Don't you know, has anybody not? I know, Matt, I know you've seen it. Danny, I know you've seen it. Calm like a bomb. Pandora punched a midget in the face last year just out of, just because she wanted to. You were just adding fuel to it. You are just adding fuel to it. And in action, Mike Jackson. Oh, <laughs> And I wear size 15 boot, by the way, Shane Knowles. This Saturday, if you're a wrestling fan, there is no other place to be unless you're going to PCW early in the afternoon. But other than that, there's no other place to be. No other yeah. place you want to be. You cannot call yourself a wrestling fan if you're not at the June 2nd show. And Beyond Ringside will be there to interview everybody. And then you can go and you can set up your obituary and you can set up everything you want to for Mike Jackson. Mike you know, can go, Jonathan, can go I'm sitting here listening. I've got a buddy in. I wasn't going to say anything else. I was just going to sit here and listen to the rest of the program. But, you know, Nemesis, it's so easy to do all that talk when you're about, what, 200 miles away, two or three hours drive away. You know, it's real easy to do all that talk. And, you know, Shane was talking about the war games the first time. You know, I, the, the Peach State Wrestling, one of the reasons I signed up with him, it's not a bunch of gimmick matches. It's not a bunch of crazy things that go on. We've had two cage matches in the history of, of, 
a Peach State wrestling, as far as I remember, in four years. And this is the second one. I was in the first one. There was only five guys in there. It was Bill the Butcher, uh, I think the Ultimate Dragon, myself, Shane Knowles, and Kent Glover, the commissioner at that time. And, you know, there was only five guys in that steel cage. But, uh, Shane, you may verify this, and I don't know if you've ever been in one. But I, when I came out of that, I was sore for about three or four or five days after that. I mean, I was so sore from head to toe from bouncing off that steel because this is a solid steel cage match. And when you put ten guys in there, I mean, it's going to be bodies flying everywhere. You know, there's going to be guys coming. I plan, if you remember, now I don't know if you remember this, but I dove off the very top of that cage. And uh, I don't know if my shoulder will hold up to get up there, but if I can get on the top, I'm diving. And Nemesis, I hope you're right there when I dive down because – I'm going to promise them something. You're promising you're going to hurt me and you're going to do all this. That's fine. You know, but I promise this. I do the old school. Everybody knows it. They call for it during the matches. Well, that porcupine hairdo of yours, that's going to be really perfect because I'm not going to take your hand and twist it up and do all like I do. I'm going to take you by the hair of the head, and I'm going to do the new old school. I'm going to call it the new school, and I'm going to walk that top rope with your hair, and I hope to have some of that hair in my hands when this thing is over. And that's about all i got to say. But Nemesis, let me tell you, you just end with this. Just take this home with you. We were the hunted, but now I'm the hunter. And when I come to that ring, I'm hunting you. I owe you, and you're going to pay back. And they, you know what they say about payback. And you know what they say about revenge. And I don't care about those other guys. I'll get my hands on them during that thing. But I hope you're the first one in the room. I hope, they, I hope they, when they ring that bell, it's me and you to start with because I'm coming for you. Yeah. You are the hunted. And I'm going to see you in Peach State. Just be sure to be there and don't try to buy your way out of this. That's all i got to say, Jonathan. Thank you for your time. All right, well, thanks for calling Mike Jackson, and uh, thank you, Wicked Nemesis and Shane Knowles. Uh, we got to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be back to wrap up the show. Georgia wrestling fans, you're going to want to make your plans to be at Johnny G's the first, third, and fifth Sunday right. of every month, 2 p.m. bell time, for Rampage Pro Wrestling television taping. And fans, if you're in middle Georgia, make sure that you watch... Rampage Pro Wrestling on Fox 24, Saturday 9 a.m. on the My 41.2, Saturday at 10 p.m. Cox Communications Cable, Thursday 8, Saturday at noon, and of course, Rampage Rewind, the one-half-hour show on Cox Communications throughout the schedule. Fans, be there. Do you remember Tommy Rich? What about Ray Gunkel or Gordon Soley? Can't get those nasty Anderson brothers out of your head? Well, you can catch them again at GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com. Who was on the first card you attended? Who was it under that mask? Remember the first Omni Spectacular or the big main events at the Bell Auditorium? That happened in Columbus on my birthday. Find out at GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com. Whether you want to get back some of your past or maybe you just want to find pro wrestling in your area, check out GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com. If you're hurt, get the money you deserve. If you're in pain, get the money you deserve. At Terry and Peterman, we're personal injury attorneys who take a professional, thorough approach to your accident and injury claims. Don't call some long-distance law firm or satellite office. Don't trust your claim to just anyone. For a free consultation, call the law office of Terry and Peterman today, 229-247-0386, or go online at www.terryandpeterman.com. The law offices of Terry and Peterman, making things right. This is Miss Rachel from The Empire, formerly known as Platinum Champions of Wrestling. Every Friday night, The Empire presents the best in professional wrestling at the Academy Theater in Avondale State. We're also at the Masquerade every month or so. Check us out on Facebook. Just look for Platinum Champions of Wrestling. And you'll get the latest details on all the hottest action from The Empire, formerly known as Platinum Champions of Wrestling. We get it. That's every Friday night at the Academy Theater and at the Masquerade as well every month. We'll see you there. Georgia Wrestling Now. We are uh, being joined real quick by someone that we were familiar with from a few months ago, Professor Morte from Monstrosity Championship Wrestling. Morte, how are you tonight? I'm fantastic. How are you, Jonathan? Doing pretty good. Um, we were are you talking ready to get the, the yell scared about... out of you Sunday? 
Are you ready for Sunday. some more Mox Velocity Championship Wrestling, huh? I'm ready for it. We were talking about that a little bit earlier before you called, and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what Monstrosity Championship Wrestling brings to the Monster Bash. What can you well, tell us about the show? Well, what I can tell you so far is that we're gonna we've taken a lot of precautions because it's so hot outside. You know, it's hotter than hell out there. So we've got uh, we moved the Monster Bash to the upper level this year. So we're gonna be in the shade. And it's gonna be a lot nicer because we're gonna have these wrestlers out there. You know, working right outside in the in a ring right there. You're gonna be able to see these guys flying out of the ring, all covered in blood and gore, and um, you know, hopefully no one's gonna die of heat exhaustion this time. You know, it can get a little hairy out there, especially when you got guys like the you know the Alabama Wolfman. I heard uh, a rumor that his cousin might be coming down. There's some sort of feud with Dracula, the gay vampire. Yes, Wolfman <laughs> for life. <laughs> Yeah, that, well, they, uh, that uh, Alabama Wolf man, you know, he's got he's got re- relative. I mean, all those guys are related, you know. <laughs> but I, I've heard I've heard rumor that the uh, the Tennessee Wolf man might be coming down, and making an appearance. Are but they from I, the I the same litter or? Yeah, just... yeah, they're from the they're they're from the same litter, and uh, you know, the family Tennessee that. Uh, Wolf, baby, oh yeah. yeah. You know the family that. Uh, that wrestles together stays together, I guess. You know, and that's that's what these guys are going to try to do. I, I I hear they're trying to take Dracula. They're going to try to defang Dracula, Dracula. So we'll we'll see what happens out there. But um, there's going to be excitement galore for sure. You know, this is our tenth year out at the Monster Bash. It's one of the biggest attended horror parties in the world. And this year we really wanted to pump things up. So I really wanted to make sure that Monstrosity Championship Wrestling was a big part of the show this year, besides all the usual punk rock bands and heavy metal bands, we're showing Planet of the Apes and Return of the Living Dead on the biggest screen in Atlanta, so we're all very excited to be bringing a big show like this for our 10th year at the Rock and Roll Monster Bash out at the Starlight Drive-In. All right, well, uh, before we let you go, Morte, I'm just curious, how is the how is it going to be set up? Is the wrestling going to take place in between bands, or are you going to have bands and then one big wrestling show, then the movie? No, or? it's, it's going to be all day long. We're going, to have, we're going to have bands play, and then there's going to be some wrestling, and then there's going to be some bands. It's going to be kind of like your show was at the Masquerade that was such a big hit. You know, bands play for a little while, and then you have wrestling, and it's just a big all-day-long festival of fearful fun. All right, and uh, we can tease tease our listeners a little bit and uh speaking of my show at the masquerade there might be uh an announcement about another one uh at the monster bash so you know that's all the more reason to come to the monster bash to find out next where you'll next see monstrosity championship wrestling yep you got to keep your ears peeled yes you do well morte i appreciate you calling in tonight absolutely I i will see you sunday if uh if i don't see you before then uh, but we uh, we'll have to wrap up Sunday our show. Starlight Driving, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, we'll see all you guys that are into wrestling and monsters this Sunday. All right, I'm looking forward to it. Great. All right, thanks a lot. Matt, uh, I guess it's about that time. It is time for our fun fact with the human hand grenade, Daniel. <laughs> Take it away, Danny. That was actually the worst connection. Are you in the middle of a tunnel? <laughs> uh, constant motion. I mean, constant motion. All right. Man, just kill the music. Kill the music. Kill it. Kill it. We'll just go ahead. Fun facts with Danny only. Uh, here's one that for the adult crowd. Uh, according to recorded history, and I don't know who actually sits back and records this stuff, but I'd love to have that job. The most number of <laughs> orgasms recorded in one hour by a female was 134 by a male was 16. I don't know how he did it, but I don't know how he walked the next day after either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, we will end the show, and uh, we'll be back next Monday at 8 p.m. with uh, with Danny Only still on board until we figure out what we're going to do about that. But until then, go see some shows and call call in and let us know what you see. Peace.
Wait, I press. I press play and it's not. There it goes. There we go. We thank you for listening to this broadcast. A production brought to you by GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com and the GWH Radio Network. Stay tuned to GWH for nostalgia, upcoming events, and more. As always, GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com thanks you for your continued support. <laughs>